the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dirt to form. Fate commanded and the mountains moved. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go. Things in your name they shall be turned. Freedom conquered, all our chains undone. Sin defeated, Jesus is overcome. Mercy triumph when the third day dawn. Darkness was denied when the storm was gone. Oh, unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be turned. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Possible things in your name, they shall be turned. Nothing shall be impossible, your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Come on. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be turned. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be turned.
seems like all I could see was the struggle Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past Bound up in shackles of all my failures Wondering how long is this gonna last But you look at this prisoner and say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. And I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be, cause I am redeemed. I'm redeemed. All my life I have been called unworthy. Named by the voice of my shame and regret But when I hear you whisper, child, lift up your head I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet And I am redeemed Set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be Because I don't have to be The old man inside of me Is his day long, dead and gone because I've got a new name, a new life. I'm not the same in a hope that will carry me home. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. She set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. Oh God, I'm not who I used to be. Jesus, I'm not who I used to be. Cause I am redeemed. Thank God redeemed. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control. What tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is a place where you promise to be I'm not enough Unless you come 
testing. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I know the praise and worship team wasn't here, and Sister Mary's gone, Sister Carol's here. Amen. I just thank God for who is here. Amen. Sister Mary had to go to Memphis and take her daughter to the hospital dealing with some things, being prayer for Sister Morgan and many other people sick and not doing well this time of year. And then we got some on vacation, enjoying life. There ain't nothing wrong with that, man, I tell you. I, I've been there. I enjoy getting my breaks, but I hate missing church. Glory to God. One of, the, one of my favorite places to be is in the house of God. I can't think of one other place that would be better, and that would be heaven. Amen? And that day's approaching soon. Someone said last night, said, man, the the, the beginning of the end has begun. Over a few little strikes, I was like, no, nah, it's just been getting bad. It's going to get worse. But I'll tell you, the children of God got something to hang on to, and that's God. We know he's going to take care of us. We know he's our defense. And I thought, Lord, I hope this ain't the beginning of the end. There's so many church people that aren't ready. <laughs> you thought I was like, you thought I was gonna say there's so many people in the world not ready, but there's so many people that fill up the houses of God that really don't know God. They really don't have a relationship with Him. They're really not connected. They really don't understand the importance of the Word of God and to put it into your heart and to serve God on a daily basis, no matter what's going on around you. Amen. Circumstances detour some people. It really does. Circumstances shouldn't matter. It should keep us focused on the cross and on what Christ done for each and every one of us. Amen. That being said, all the classes are being dismissed. Amen. Thank God for these classes. Amen. Glory to God. We've been in Psalms for a while now, for a matter of fact, for 62 chapters. And I'm still in Psalms. And I, I come up here... Tonight, I've been seeing this Bible up here for three or four different times coming. I thought, man, someone was here during New Year's Eve and left their Bible. I said, I hope they got another one or they, they might not be reading much. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So, uh, Amen. One more time. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise. Remember, Sister... Uh, Cherie has three, did you say three bulging discs? So let's remember her in prayer. And I, I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read one passage of Scripture. And Brother Larry, I'll ask you to open up the service in prayer. But let's read one passage real quick. Let's read two passages and then let's pray. Truly my soul waits. Truly, I'm going to get where it is. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap praise. I'm, I'm going to go. He can leave that right there. Is that a little loud? That sound all right? Praise God. Here we go. Truly my soul wait, waiteth upon God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. If now I want you to get a hold of this. Now he said, "He is only my rock." Now I'm not going to keep us long tonight. This this chapter's got like 12 verses, and then I got a few cross references, but I'm not going to be on it long. I, I was sitting there studying it, thinking that, and reading it, thinking, "Well, we won't be there long tonight." But the Holy Spirit may have something else. But I want to share this. It said, "Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From Him comes my salvation. Your salvation's only in Christ." 
And listen to what he's saying. He said, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And we got to realize he's our rock. He's our salvation. He's who we're planted in. When he told Peter, he said, upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He wasn't telling Peter upon Peter because they went out and got St. Peter. I'm talking about, he was letting him know from what came out of your mouth that I am the Son of God and I am the Lamb of God and I am the Savior of the world. He said, upon that will my church be built and the gates of hell cannot move against that. There's no way the devil can contend against God. There's no way he can stand against Jesus. And Jesus is letting us know that he's the only rock of our salvation. He's who we plan ourselves on. He's who we're firm, firm on. We don't put our confidence in men. We don't put our trust in men. We don't put our trust in women. Because I'm telling you, if you do that, they will fail and you will fail. Amen. I got some scriptures to share on it. Listen to what it says. If, if, if we take up our own defense, you will fall. If he is our defense, we cannot fall. Now think about that. And, and, I, and I said a little bit on that Sunday and didn't even know this was, well, I did because I've done read it, but I, but I wasn't referencing that. It's just when the Spirit moves on you to speak. But I'm talking about when you think about, and I believe I did last Sunday, but when you think about him and when you trust him, and I talked about when you fall, every time that you fall, you've been in yourself. You ever noticed that when you're serving God, it just seems like, man, you're on top of that mountain. You're serving the Lord. Nothing goes wrong. And then when you get a little discouraged or you get a little depressed, I, I'll tell you what happens if you really want the truth. When you, when you quit praying, when you quit reading, when you quit seeking, then you get a little discouraged. Then you get a little depressed because the Word of God says renew your mind daily. So that means to go into the Word of God daily and refresh your mind with the Word of God. It's what gives us hope. It's what gives us peace. It's what gives us strength. It's when we realize that He is our rock and we shall not be moved. We won't be moved. Now listen, when he said, I shall not be greatly moved, he's saying, if he's my defense, if he's my salvation, if he's my rock, if he's who I'm trusting in, I will not be greatly moved. In other words, he's saying, I can't be moved because I'm in him. It's when we get out of him, listen to me, it's when we start doing it our way is when we get in trouble. That's when the defense becomes, I'm defending myself, and we can't defend ourselves. And people might buff up, oh, I can defend my, yeah, you can in the fleshly realm, but not in the spiritual realm. And the devil will eat your lunch. He'll take your little brown bag of peanut butter jelly sandwiches, and he'll eat every one of them and leave you starving because you can't contend against him without him that's in him. That's why he said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We ain't got a chance against the devil on our own. But in Jesus when he comes up against us and that Holy Spirit begins to give us that word. See, we got to understand that, that my wife been watching a man on TV that's a, a marriage man. He's a marriage counselor, like been preaching for 30 something years. And I got to listening to him a little bit and I thought, that is so good. He was talking about the gate. And he said, this is a gate. And we got to watch what comes in and what goes out and what we say and what we do because we're guarding the gate of our soul and I thought man had all kinds of scriptures to go with I thought I need to order that and study that that's some good stuff but what this is we have to be careful because when we take things on our own that's what we do we begin to defend on our own and we're no match for the enemy and the enemy comes at us with spiritual warfare and if you try to handle him fleshly you're done and you'll fall but if you handle him by the word of God and through the spirit of God that's inside you you got him wounded. He can't have him. And you won't fail. And listen, I'm going to have some scriptures that are going to help us. Man, and, I, and I, I was reading this, and there's a scripture that goes along with it. That's why I said, pay attention to he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved because it's even again in this verse, and it's all through Psalms. It's just repeated over and over and over and over again. And, it, and I already read a commentary on it. So it's for our benefit. It's for us to understand that if you hear something enough that, man, I've heard Psalms for 62 chapters. I'm tired of Psalms and you need Psalms because it's very encouraging and very uplifting and very much letting us know that he's our defense. He's our rock. He's our salvation. He's our all in all. He takes care of each and every one of us when we don't even realize that God's protecting us. 
That song says, even when you don't see it, he's working. I'm telling you, he's working. I wrote that down earlier in one of my scriptures. I wrote it down. I said, man, I got to write that down. Because, man, when I sit at my desk, I just want to jump, shout, run, sing, do something. Then I come to church and everybody looks at me like a calf looking at a new gate. And I said, Lord, did they hear the same thing I hear? Or, or we like the scripture says, I'm going to jump over to the New Testament. Your ears are dull of hearing. It means people don't stop hearing. You know what my uh, Pastor Randy told me one time? He said, what happens in a church is a pastor preaches there so long that people get so immune to his voice that a lot of times they don't grip it. He said, another pastor can come in and preach one Sunday and preach the same thing. And he said, they'll throw cheers and bobby pins and come out and they'll run. And the pastor will be sitting there thinking, I just preached that a month ago. Everybody looked at me like, what did he say? And, and, you, and, you, and you, he said, that's why revival's good. We got revival coming next month. And, and this month ain't over with yet. Then we got revival coming in March. We used to have revival in January, February, March. And I said, well, I got February, March taken care of. But we start looking. This month ain't over with yet. We may do something at the end of this month. God's not done with us yet. And God's just now starting to move. Amen. I'm telling you, the foundations of everyone that's not rooted and grounded is about to be shook. Listen to what it says, and, and I, I want to go, well, I'm just going to skip. I'm going to go Psalms 25 and 5. I'll get rid of a, a few of these verses that I have wrote down, and then we'll come back. Psalms 25 and 5. It said, lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art God, the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. And I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm not going to get into a lot, but... I, we don't wait enough. I don't wait enough. I'm one of them. I want to do it right now. I want to do it right now. And, and, and even in a lot of different things, something happened today that even was a blessing that, that if I would have jumped on it at first would have been double what I ended up getting it for. And I thought, thank God that I waited and waited and waited and I talked about it and talked about it and I kept backing off from it and, you know, from yesterday to today. And then even when I was studying, I was like, Lord, did I wait enough? He said, it's enough. You know, I, I feel like that it, that it was the, the right time to pull the trigger because, amen, you don't want somebody to go in the hole, amen. You, you want to take care of people. But anyway, I was like, I was like, all right, Lord, did I wait long enough that I do right? But so many times we're a microwave generation. We want something right now. And most of the time, if you go too quick, it costs you. And God said, you need to wait on me. You need to be led by me. You need to wait if it takes all day. We think about that. A day is a long time if there's something that needs to be done. And he said, I wait upon God. He said, I wait upon thee all day. He said, lead me in thy truth. Teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. How is he going to teach you? Through the word of God. Now, I'm telling you, I, I can tell. I'm going to get in trouble here. I'm around some people more than I need to be around them. And, 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 I, and I, I'm around people a lot. And, and I, I've learned that a lot of people is not filled up with the Word of God. They're more filled up with the world than they are the Word of God. People's commitment shows you they're more filled up with the world than they are God. Now, be careful. I get people mad. I, man, I hurt feelings. I don't care. My job is important. I need my job. I got to eat. And you can tell I like to eat. But I, it's important. I need it. But it's not as important to me as God. I lost a contractor one time. I know I did. Uh, it, and part of it had to do with that because I stood on the truth of the Word of God. He even told me one time, he said, we don't talk about that. I hear you do that at church. I said, no, you missed it. We talk about this all the time. We do this all the time. This is what we do. You, and then my family is there. And then, then the church is there. And I said, then your job is somewhere on down in there. And I would minister to him and his daddy because they, they were apart and having issues. And I'd let him know, you know, how can you serve God and say that you're saved serving God, and you and your daddy don't get, how can that be? I said, that don't even line up with scriptures. How can you say you love God and you can't even love your own family? Especially if you're a Christian. I just got somebody mad. Someone said, so you mean you don't, you don't, no, no, no. You're supposed to be, the Bible said be good to all people, especially those of the household of faith. You can't be good to the people in the kingdom of God. Something wrong with you. Amen. And, and Paul even said, is it not even better for you to be wronged? 
In other words, every now and then it's okay for you to be wrong. He said, not every now and then, every time. It's better for you to be wrong than to be up and right or get the upper hand or make it all the time. If it comes to salvation, it comes. It ain't working half the time, no way. You you just monitor people. You just I'm I'm a I'm an observer. I watch people. Now, I'll be honest with you. And I and, and I know the winter times the world's worse about people getting sick or going on whatever we got to do. I miss church too much when I go on vacations. But I mean it's true when you when you see that and you realize that I don't put a lot of stock in that. I told my son this evening. I said, "Man, what you doing? You need to come on church." Well, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go do that. Well, you need to come to church. Whatever you're doing, bring it to church. People say, well, you shouldn't You shouldn't be like that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. I'm an advocate. I think that when he said not forsaken the assembling themselves together in the house, the Lord is the manner of the day is, as you see, as other people are doing, but you get your heinies in church. I'm paraphrasing that part. That wasn't in there. He'd probably be a little harsher if he talked to us face to face. Yeah, he, you know, it's going to be, he says, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. Every church everywhere is having the same battle. I hear them all over the country when you talk to people. You can't get people to come out. We're having revival next month. I don't care if none of you come. Ain't that something? If it's me and the evangelists, I'm having service. I'm coming to worship God. And see, that's where we have to get as individuals. We have to get to the place to where, you know what, I'm going to serve God no matter what. I made my mind up. When my son passed away, then my grandson passed away, I sat in my office one day. I was up there just weeping before the Lord, and a man come busting into my office, and I'm sitting there just weeping before the Lord. He said, brother, don't quit. If you quit, I don't know what I, I said, man, you'll keep serving God. I said, that's what I just told God. I said, God, if you take my whole family, I'm going to serve you. If the enemy attacks me, and every one of my, I'm still going to serve you. So he might as well leave me alone. Because my mind's made up. And so you've got to have a determination like that and a hunger. And then when you're doing good, people wonder, why is he doing good? Maybe it's the zeal. Maybe it's the faithfulness. Maybe it's to, God can, God can, people tie God's hands. They're looking for blessings that's not coming. They, 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 they wonder, God, where are you at? <laughs> My finances is going crazy. He said, well, that dollar you put in last year is what I'm blessing you on. It's been gone a while. <laughs> I wanted to bless you with another dollar, but I, <laughs> I get in trouble quick. See, I got I to gotta stay on this, Brother Larry. I'll get run off. It, it, good thing there's another pastor here because they may vote on us tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen to what it says, 33 and 20. It says, our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. I wonder, do we really wait on the Lord? Sean said it at the beginning of service. What do we come to church for? Do we, do we come to hear a minister? Pre I have people sometimes ask me, who's preaching Sunday night? Who cares? If the word is being spoke, and the Holy Spirit is speaking through someone to speak to you. You, you couldn't get a, a better message than we read Sunday night. Man, it hit me. It hit every, If it didn't hit you, you wasn't listening. The Word of God goes forth. It don't matter who's preaching. But it's the anointing that brings forth and breaks the yokes on people's lives. Most people's miracle comes and they're not here. You'll hear them say, I get my miracle at home. How good has that been doing for you? <laughs> Really? Sounds like me, you're still struggling. I can't, I got I gotta stay, I gotta stay focused. See, I, sometimes I get up, I get off and see if y'all all sit in the middle, I wouldn't chase all them rabbits everywhere. <laughs> but I feel like I gotta shoot a shotgun and get everybody. We gotta scatter this and get the word out. But 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 listen, he said, our soul waited upon the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Man, when you think about that, it don't make you, you're not fearful to go into the, the enemy's camp because you're shielded. You're protected. Don't you know the devil goes before God and he says, if you'll take that bubble off of him. And I said, no, my still going to serve me. I'm his shield. I'm his protector. I'm taking care of him. Listen, I, I can't take my shield off and people look. Sometimes you just go through things. But I'm telling you, when you realize he's my shield, I don't care what storm you go through. You can walk through that storm and come out the other side because you realize that you're waiting on him anyway. And, you and you know, it's like someone told me when I was sick, 
He said, I don't know what you're trying, what, what the Lord's trying to teach you, but I hope you learn fast. Thought for a minute. I said, okay. I said, all right, Lord, I'm ready to learn. Whatever it is you're trying to tell, I'm ready to learn. Amen. So when we go through things, God's trying to teach us, but God's not let us go. He's our shield. He's our buckler. He's our salvation. He's our He's our all in all. And we know He's got us. So whatever we're going through, say, I know I'm going to go through it. And if I don't, it's going to be better for me anyway. It's like Iran. They said, well, they could shoot a nuclear missile over here and kill some people. Glory to God. What, what, are you, what, what are you afraid of? you got a shield. And listen, if he's done with us here, then we're going to go. And if someone blows us up, it's just a quick avenue to God. People say, you know, how are you going to die? If we get blown up, I'll tell you on the way up, hey, we died from an explosion. <laughs> yeah, y'all looking at me funny, amen? Hey, well, the ones that's going, the others, I'll be like, hey, where they at? Anyone seen Carol? No, I'm just kidding. Carol, I'm going to sit in the back. I ain't hearing this. Hey, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, it'll be like, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back on, on the scriptures and get over. It says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. The Lord is their strength in the time of trouble. Where does your help come from? He said, my help comes from the hills. So he's looking to the hills. He's looking to, he said, but my salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is our strength in a time of trouble. When we get in trouble, you, you know, I was I was witnessing to this guy today that was doing some things, and I got to talking to him. And man, I talked so long, I thought I ain't gonna be able to preach. Am I here when I need to be back home, going back over some things? But I was just witnessing, sharing with him. I talked to him about my son dying, about my grandson dying. I was just sharing some things with him, and that's why I told him. You know, I said, listen, that's the times that God gives you strength to walk through that storm. You can't walk through that by yourself. You can't get done. I knew when it was all said and done after three days, I was so. War, I was mentally, physically, spiritually, I always say that, worn plumb out, couldn't do nothing. And someone said, I can't believe you preached your own son's funeral. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me instantly and said, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't hold up and do it. I carried you through it. I helped you through it. I was your strength. I was your shield. Listen to me. I was your salvation. I was what held you up. I was what carried you through. You didn't do it. Look what happened when I just got off of you a little bit. You about fell down now. He's what holds us up. He's our shield. He's our strength in the time of trouble. Some people think, was that trouble? It was for me. For a while, I had to wrap my mind around it, but it was a troublesome time. It was a storm. I was in a valley. I was looking out. I was thinking, God, where is my help? And he said, I'm your help in a time of trouble. I'm the one that's there with you. I'm the one that's in your heart. I'm the one that carries you through. I'm the one that tells you you can keep going. You don't have to quit. You don't have to stop. It don't matter what no one else is doing. If we got our blinders on and we're looking forward, it don't matter. Yeah, glory to God. And when the, and, and, and a lot of people wait till they get in trouble and then they call on him. God, where are you at? And he said, same place I was at last time. I see you're back again. What's wrong now? Oh, See, y'all ain't hearing me. It's the truth. The only time we come to God and we want the protection and we want the shield and we want, God, I got to pay it tomorrow, God. I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I ain't say it. I'm staying out of that. God said, if you had been faithful, I would have already took care of it. Oh, help me, Jesus. I got I gotta quit. He's listen, you, you may not see it. That's where I get from this. There he's our strength in a time of trouble. And I wrote this down because it goes with that song. You might not can see it, but he's working. Even though I don't see it, he's working. Even though I don't feel it, he's working. Amen. Man, we laid in that bed. Me and my wife laid in that bed. I thought, why? Well, it's going three o'clock in the morning. Still ain't went to sleep on the on the very time that my son died. Which three o'clock in the morning? We know we need to sleep. We know we need to rest. Can't even sleep. Just laying there thinking. You know, the breath's been knocked out of us. Our heart's been tore out of us. We're going through the storm, and you're laying there. And even though we couldn't feel it, 
God was working. I'm going to tell you a story. True story. This happened. Brother Don knows the guy. I didn't know the guy. I believe it was you know him. Some Harrington guy. What, what? The singer guy that came through. He's just coming through town. Harrington. Terry Harrington or something. He come through town. I didn't know him from Adam's house, Cat. He come through town. We, we Brother Don, he come through town. We said, man, come on over. He come over and I think he sung a little bit one Sunday. Went out and eat with us. My son was still alive. We was just enjoying life, you know, and got done. He goes way off wherever he lives away. And and uh, and uh me and Lisa's laying there that night, 3 o'clock in the morning. We're still not asleep. We're sharing things in our room that nobody knows. Nobody. But me and my wife and the Holy Ghost. We share some things in our room and 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 man, we're just sitting there and we're we we'll be all right for a minute and we'll cry for a minute, and we'll be all right for a minute, and we'll cry for a minute, and we we'll get over it for a minute, and we we'll just you know be there for one another for a little bit, and then all, all of a sudden, you know, a few days go by and, and Jordan's gone and I'm I'm just still my mind still ain't completely wrapped around it, but we still just know we gotta serve God and keep going and it's a few weeks or so, I don't know how long went by, but I was down in my office and I was sitting in there and I was just reading and praying and, and, and just like it was like the Holy Spirit. I don't check the mailbox. Have I ever come over here and got anything out of the mailbox? Just don't do it. I, I, it wasn't my place. I just needed to go do the mailbox. Lisa or someone else did the mailbox, but that day I was sitting there. It's like, Lord, let's go to the mail. I went out to the mailbox and get the mail. Look, some Harrington guys wrote us a letter. I go back in, I'm sitting at my desk, I'm sitting there, and I open it up, and I begin to read it. And uh, well, I'm telling you, it was powerful. I begin to read that. And he's just, he's sitting there talking to us and saying, my dad always told me when you write a letter to someone, make it personal, don't type it, write it. So he wrote it. And I'm reading through this letter. We still got it somewhere, I'm sure. And, and about, about a page and a half down, he says, and P.S., he stops where he's at, he says, and P.S., the Lord, the Holy Ghost just told me to tell you. I see a young man coming back on a white stag. And he went into writing stuff that no one knew but me and my wife. My wife right there, what started is she said, I see Jordan coming back on a white stag. I got that letter, man. I went to jumping, shouting, kicking, slinging. I, I'm about to tear my office up. I said, if someone would come in there to put me in a straitjacket. Holy Ghost fell in there. I was speaking in the Holy Ghost. I was crying. I was weeping. I was shouting. I was like, whoa, praise God, because no one knew it. I only met him one time. He writes me a letter. And then right in the middle, it says, oh, P.S., the Holy Ghost just told me to tell you, Lisa, Made it personal, did he not? He said, Lisa, I see a young man coming back on a white stack. And he went to share him some things that made me come unglued. And I said, ain't no one can't tell me the Holy Ghost can't speak to you. And he's 600 miles away and writes me a letter. Don't know. I know he wasn't in my room that night. Hallelujah. But I know who was. So even in the times of trouble, God is working. He's right there. It'll be your troublesome time. It'll be the times you don't think you can hold on no more. You'll think, God, I'm about to break. I can't make it. I, I don't know if I can go another day, God. I don't know if I can make it. I got I got to do or I got to do or I got to do. I, I just got to do something different. And God will show up right in the midst of the brink. If you hang on, if you'll wait, if you'll trust Him, if you let Him be your shield, if you let Him be the rock of your salvation, right in time, every time, He'll show up. Because the Bible says, if you faint not, you'll have your harvest. And that's where we got to hold on. Listen, I'm going I'm to move on quickly. It says, how long will you imagine, verse 3, mischief against man? Shall you be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall will you be? Or as a tiltering fence? In other words, a tottering fence, a fence falling. He said, they, they only consult to cast him down. From his excellently, they, de they delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. It said, and now who was he talking about? This is actually prophecy of the Messiah. All the way from Psalms back into the Messiah. And this is what he was saying. The scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees were liars like their father, the devil. And you go to John 8, 44 through 55 and read about it. It says, it is impossible for self-righteous 
to true first listen to this it is it is impossible for self righteousness to truly love God or those who truly follow the Lord. Self-righteous people can't love God. They can't even love themselves. They can't even love you. It's all about them. It's all about how they look or how they do or how they want. He told him, he said, you got the cup looking good, the sauce. Everything looks good on the outside. He said, but the inside is dead. And that's what Jesus was telling them. And, and that's it's a self-righteousness like, you know, it's, it's me, it's this or that. No, no, no. It's all about Jesus. It always has been. It always will be. And self-righteous people have trouble. That's why they have so much trouble reaching people. People want genuine love. People want people that's real. People want something that they can, it's tangible, that they can understand. They want to, to be loved. They want to be accepted. They want to be brought in no matter what they're facing. And they want to say, you know what? There be, there's, there, and I'm, I'm going to go prophesy to you. They're going to be people in homosexuality or uh, relationships that will end up in this church. And what you'll have to do is not, oh, you ain't going to make it like that. What you'll have to do is love them into the kingdom of God. You can't condemn them in, but you can love them in. And people that are self righteous have a problem with that. I'm telling you, Sunday morning when I preached, I felt it when I said it. When I said something about that young man that was in Florida that called the radio station and said, I got saved five years ago, but I've been with two men since. He said, can I still go to heaven? I felt it in this church. It was like, zip, nope. Thank God you ain't the judge. And the man said, most definitely. You're a Christian. You're saved. You're on track. You're back going. He Listen, he's, he's not living with him. And then he just, he, he did what he shouldn't have did. But if he repented, if he's on track, who are we to say he's not going to heaven? He done got saved and repented and back on track. And we still pointing a finger at him. And God said it's hard for a self-righteous person to love somebody. Better yet, they can't even love God like they need to love Him. Better yet, love somebody else. And then when somebody's going through something, how are you going to love them if you think you're so much up higher than them? Come on, we all going to go cross the street. I ain't going in. I'm going to stand back and say I may even walk on water. <laughs> <laughs> no volunteers? We just need one. We won't watch you. Just run out across there. <laughs> hey, glory to God. I, 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 I just see, this is this is so hilarious to me because, you know, that's what someone told me one time. They said, you know, one thing that I know that you taught me is how to love people and how to forgive. Man, I didn't teach you how to do that. God does what this whole scripture that's what it was talking about that you teach me listen to what it says i'll go back to it for me he said wait upon the lord miss salvation and greatly defense no i'm not there yet i'll get to that scripture and then he's, he's telling us to be taught it was one of those scriptures to where he says teach me and lead me so it's the spirit that teaches us and leads us i'm just a, i'm gonna tell you something i'm just a mouthpiece i am and i've understood my role in the kingdom of God, who God's called me to be, and that is the pastor, that is to teach, that is to preach and do what I'm doing. And that means I'm an ambassador for God. I'm not an ambassador for me. I'm an ambassador for God. That means you're a mouthpiece. That means everywhere you go, when you're on the job, when you're at work, when you're eating, when you're sleeping, whatever you're doing, you're a mouthpiece for God. I wonder how many of us use it. For the blessing a while ago that come out of that verse or the cursing. I'm not going to meddle. I'm going to preach. Now, I'm going I'm to stay, but it was cries. It's hard to love somebody when you think you're so much above them. It's hard. If you think you all that in a bag of chips, hey, I've said it, and you've heard me say it in 2019. Mm -hmm. I said, if Jesus would have waited to 2019, he wouldn't have had to win on the cross. They, there's a whole bunch of people could have went. I just ain't met them yet. I met a few that thought. <laughs> I'll be careful. I'll get in trouble. L listen to verse 5. It says, My soul, my soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from <laughs> I love it. Is from Him. Listen to that. My expectation. Man, when I come in, I've, it, I've learned this. Because as a pastor, 
it bothers you sometimes when you come in and you think, praise God, there was a hundred people there Sunday morning. You come in on Wednesday night and you say, you get to looking around and say, they do it, they do it. I bet the rapture occurred. I know the mothers that was here, them was the water walkers. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them I said that because that would probably be the self-righteous. You a good teacher. You're going to have to finish. I done, got, I done dug a hole and I can't get back out. I, I'm, I'm down here and I'm trying to look out this hole and it's getting dark. All I can see is a light and one of them's out. So, so, <laughs> so I, I'll get back. Uh, expectation. If you don't expect nothing out of nobody, you can't get let down. So I've made up my mind. It don't matter about people. It don't matter what they get. I love people. I'll be there for people. I'll do whatever I can. But I ain't expecting much out of them because 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 definitely we're not getting a lot. Man, I gotta stay. I gotta stay on this. If your expectations on him and what he can do. If your expectations on him moving, you're gonna see a move of God. If you come in expecting me to do something, you're gonna miss it. If you come in looking for Brother Sean or Brother Don or Sister, if, if you're looking for anybody else to do it, Brother Pee Wee or Brother, like, you've missed it. Listen, you have to have your expectation on God and say, God, I came in. I want to hear a word from you, God. I want to be fed from you, God. I know there's going to be a song that's going to minister to my heart. There's going to be a song that's going to speak to me. I know there's going to be a word that's going to come out that's going to help me get over this. I'm in the valley, and God, I'm wanting to climb the mountain. But every time I step up, I get on a loose rock and fall down. I want to get on the rock of my salvation and I want to get on the one that's got my back and my shield and trust you. And that's where we got to get. We got to get to where we, where our expectations on God. I came in, God, just go ahead and show out my life. God, I, don't, I, I didn't come. If they don't get nothing, I came for mine. I came to get my breakthrough. I came to get my, I came to get my blessing. I came to be a blessing. I came to pour out. So when I, when I, when I come to get poured into, so when I go out, I can pour out of myself. What do you come for? I come to get poured into because I need more. Someone said, you preaching, yeah? I'm pouring it out now. But I'm going to be filled up enough, I'm going to pour it out on the job. Here we go. We ain't going to stop. I'm, I'm going to tell you what. I, I'm going to go back to that. Remember verse 5. I want to go back to that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep going. Let's go. We'll, we'll end up back there in a minute, maybe. When man has been disappointed enough by other men, or women disappointed by other men, or by women, or whatever, he will then wait only upon God. No expectation should be looked at from another man or another woman or from no other human. The Lord alone is our provider. He's the only one that can see you through. He's the only one that will carry you through. He'll be the only one there in your darkest night. Now, my battery may go out. One of my battery people is... It's taking care of her mom in law, I believe, and the other one has got a slip disc. I, I don't I don't know, but if it goes out, I'll pick up the other mic. I looked at it, it had three bars, but I'm gonna try to get done before it messes up. But what, what I'm talking about, when when you look at this and you begin to realize and put your faith and put your hope and put your comfort, don't put nothing on. God's the one's gonna take care of you. in your darkest night. I've heard preacher after preacher after preacher that has walked away from God. Not even serving God. Not even in church. They've got out. You know what happened? Some of their loyal people, they said, man, they was close. They had my back. They were there for me. And they were the ones that, that bashed me. They were the ones that, that hurt me. They were the ones that dug that down. They were the ones that hurt so bad. You know why? Our expectation gets on men when it should be on him. Our expectation gets on women or men or, or whatever. Amen. I, I come in every time just with thanking, Lord, hallelujah. I'm just glad I'm able to come. I'm glad I got breath. I'm glad I can lift my hand. I'm glad I can shout. I'm glad I can run. I'm glad I can praise you. I'm just glad to be in the house of God. Amen. My expectation is I know God's going to move. There ain't nobody in there but me and two or three. Because he said where two or three are gathered in my name. I don't do the church thing. I serve the Lord at home. How many got saved? Watching the weather channel. Hey. How many got saved watching Andy Griffin? 
How many got saved watching Fox News? How many did you minister to? How many times did you really say, God, I'm so glad to be gathered here at my home and to worship the name of Jesus? Do you really worship God at home? I struck a nerve. Not in here. But people on Facebook now is like, who does he think he is? I'm a devil chasing, pew jumping, devil, devil fighting, demon beating, preaching machine. Glory to God. I, I'm not, listen, I'm not afraid of the enemy. It was David said it was my equal. It was one went to church with me that hurt me. There the clowns go. <laughs> Can't come. Well, they act a fool. They probably are a fool. I don't care who they are. Or where they are, where they go to church. I can't stand it, Brother Don. Go places to hear people want to bash their. I don't even want to hear it when they start. They want to start talking about their pastor. You know what I'm thinking? My God, stay away from our church because you'll get around some of them and boy, y'all have a whirlwind. Y'all have a tongue slashing. You get with some of them and time y'all talk about y'all and they talk about me. I mean, we, we'll be so tongue. We'll look like Jesus with the stripes on our backs. See, we gotta be careful what we allow. I just say, you know, really, I just I don't, I don't want to hear it. I have people tell me stuff about other pastors. You know, well, I wonder they don't, they don't. I, I, maybe you know, maybe they got something going. I ain't getting into that. I'm not. It's it's like this. People want. I wonder what they're doing over. I don't care what they're doing over. I hope they're serving God. I hope somebody got raised from the dead. I hope somebody lost, got saved. I hope glory to God. I, I hope the presence of God fell in every church. Moses said, I will to God that all were prophets. He wished everyone was prophesying. I wish everyone was filled with the Spirit of God. I wish everyone was preaching. I wish everyone was teaching. I wish everybody was a devil chasing, preaching machine. People like the devil been on my back all week. What you doing turning your back to him? He, there it is again. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Earlier he said, I shall not greatly be moved. It don't matter how great the storm is, I ain't going to be moved. And then now he says, I shall not be moved. He said, because he only. You know what that means? Your rock ain't me. Your rock ain't them. Your rock ain't them. Your rock ain't them. Your rock ain't them. Your rock is him. And when you put your faith and trust in Him, you won't be moved. He said, ain't going to happen. You put your confidence, your trust in someone else, you are in trouble. Because I don't know if you know, this is flesh. I, I tore it yesterday. It's flesh. It will let you down. Greater is he that's in you than he's in the world. He won't let you down. You stay focused. You stay yourself on God. You trust in God. You know that he's the rock of your salvation and he's your defense and you won't be moved. You start depending on other people, you're going to be shook and your world's going to be rocked. You're going to be like some of them pastors. That they're going to, listen, this is going to hurt some people's feelings on Facebook, but I, I, I I'll pray for them. I'll hug their neck tell them I love them. I will. Pat them on the back. Well, maybe I, well, maybe, maybe I better leave it alone. This is what I tell people. I couldn't leave it alone. So I walked right there and he said, don't leave it alone. Go on tell them. He said, they, 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 this is what I heard. Inquiring minds want to know. Someone will say something about me. And I do it on purpose. Just, just because it's, it, it's the, the lack of wisdom, I guess. They'll be telling me something about me. Said, they said that? Yeah. I said, consider the source. I said, don't worry about it. You'll know in time. If what they're saying so, it'll come out of me. If there's enough pressure, if there's enough talking, if there's enough trouble, if there's enough adversary, if there's enough oh man, there's another one died, there's something else happened, if there's enough goes on if that's the way I am, it'll come out I said but consider the source and watch them matter of fact, where, where are they at? 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, can't help. I try, but I can't help myself. I always tell them that. And I mean that. Consider the source. Do you know who told you that? And see, so you didn't even know I read I'm reading your mail now. No, no I'm just kidding. But you, but, you, but, you, but but who tells you that? All you got to do is watch them. Watch their life. Watch. I want you to watch me. Because Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Huh? Now, now if you follow me as I'm following Christ, you're going to be all right. Because we ain't going to be moved. If we start going to clubs. Huh? We start going to the pony like you tried to get me to go the other night. We in trouble. Oh, all you wives here now. I, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, but praise God, don't you kill him. I was just joking. Amen. But, but, but that's it. Follow me as I follow Christ. We can't get in trouble. We, man, I told you I was going to get done early. Brother Don, you lied again. You the one told me getting out early. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Amen. Someone said, I don't believe it. I really am. Y'all got to tell me where I got me. Where did I get? I got to verse 6. Glory to God. Listen, he only is my defense. Listen to what it says in verse 7. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my salvation and my refuge is in God. Now listen, I want you to get this commentary. It says, over and over again in Psalms, the Holy Spirit repeats these statements in one form or another. And it is done for our benefit. It's done for us to try to understand that our salvation and our everything is locked up in Him. Everything. If you're a Christian, listen, you, you, and I, I'm going to get into something in a minute tell you, and share you something before I get done. And I, I'm going to get done by 8 o'clock. I promise that. Because we got we got to get out. People got kids. got to go to school. Amen. And, and this is this is what I'm telling you is if we if we get ourselves locked up in him, we got it made. We got it, we're we're set. It's on our and when we really get this wrapped around our mind and our heart and our soul, we've got it together. And God's gonna take care of us and we know this. Man, when our finances get in a tight, every time I get mine, mine got in a tight. I'm telling you, it's it's like it's like when you go through December and you go through January, and then the rain and the mud and, you, and things don't get you get in that little crunch, and that's when God says Hey, you still trust me? I ain't, I ain't fed. I trust you. I trust you in my, my fight. Listen, the same God that saved you is the same God that heals you. We got faith enough to believe that God saved us. We're born again. We don't have faith enough to believe God for our healing. We don't have faith enough to believe God for our finances. We, we, we think we're supposed to be a broke joke. How you gonna witness anybody like that? Because the poor is who we're witnessing to, and they like you to buy them a hamburger. Hey, let me feel your belly, and then let me feel your heart. That's it, because that's how you get to a man through his belly. Then you can get to his heart. Because don't y'all look at me. I look around and tell you, we like to eat. I'm in trouble, ain't I? I'm gonna get back in this word. Some of y'all just, what did he say? Trust in Him at all times. Or don't know that, that might say, I, I ain't seen it up there, I'm seeing it right here. It says, trust in Him half of the time, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Did it, did it say half of the time? He said, trust in Him all the time. If you trust in Him all the time, how are you going to be moved? How are you going to fall? How, and I know we go through things, but every time you go through something, you can look at your life. Just take a little rewind. You'll know where you turned wrong. A lot of times people say, God told me to do that. God didn't tell you to do that. You was listening to yourself. Go back and see if it was God trying to promote you or if it was you trying to promote you. Now watch this. And I'm closing with this here in just a second. <laughs> this ladybug's trying to get me to close. He says, Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a liar. But be laid in the balance. There are altogether lighter than vanity. It said the ideal is if we as believers trust in men and our capability, we will be disappointed. We must truly, we must fully trust in the Lord. We can't, we can't, we, we, 
If you begin to trust in people, you'll be disappointed. I have as a pastor. That's what I was talking about a while ago. You get to where you trust in people. You get to, you, you, you know, you get to where you think that's 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 my, you know, that, that that's that's it. That's you. That's your buddy. You you pour into people and you pour into people, and then you wonder, you know, where them people are, or what what's happened or what's took place or, you know, they, they it's like they they turn on you. It's like you see them out sometimes and they don't even want to talk to you and you think man what did i did was it something i did and it's like god said no what happened was is, is you begin you begin to trust in them you begin to look to them you begin to believe they were part of your source and he said i'm your source i'm your everything i am your salvation i am your your hope and your everything i you gotta if you get to where you put your trust in other people you'll get disappointed you'll get disappointed fast you, I can't tell you how many people told me, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be at church Sunday. And then they never show up. And someone said, do you get disappointed? Yeah, as a pastor, you get disappointed. It sort of bothers you. Why? Because you're, you, you, you were trusting in what they said. When in reality, you trust in what God says. You say, God, it don't matter if there's five here. I'm going to preach to them because you brought them. I'm going to minister to them. Amen? Listen to what it says. Trust not in oppression. And become not vain in robbery. He said, Rich in rich, riches increase, set not your heart upon them. He said, Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your hearts upon them. I said something about that Sunday. You know, people you, you ever notice people that's doing good and doing a little better and making a little money, they, they get to where you wonder, Well, God, I really don't need you. I got you, God. I don't I don't have to go to church. I don't need church. I don't need Christians. I don't need nobody. Because I'm reading it right there. In God, we trust. And I got a bunch of these, so I'm good right now. You want to get in the tie? Get in the bind, I'll be back. But we 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 trust in unre we trust in things we shouldn't trust in. When our trust should be in God. And listen to this. This is my last few verses. God has spoken it once, twice. Have I heard it? This is the power it belongs, that the power belongs unto God. It is not by human might nor by, by human power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Now listen to this. He said, and also unto you, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for you render to every man according to his work. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9 and I got one more verse and I'm through. It said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Listen, no matter what you go through, you ain't destroyed. Because he's got you. Go right along. I thought, Lord, how does that go with this? It's because we're perplexed. We're, 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 it seems like we're have things come at us from every angle, and God says, you're not destroyed. You may be cast down. You may be going through things, but you ain't destroyed. I will rise you up again. And listen to Romans 7 and 22 in my last verse. Stand to your feet. Play something lightly. Are you going to play something, Sister Carol? Just play something lightly for the altar service because this, this, I'm done with this. It says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I, I looked at that twice and three times. And I, I, I looked over it and I said, For I delight in the law. I delight in the law. I delight in the law of God. After the inward man. How about your inward man? Is he starving? You know why I study the scriptures? You know why I read? I heard Brother Sean read that thing the other day. It makes you think, why do I read the Word? Why do I study? Why? Because the Bible says to And the Bible tells you to study, show yourself approved. And one of the scriptures I use Sunday morning said, always be ready to give an answer why you believe what you believe. But if you never read, and you never pray. And you never study. 
And you never feed that inward man. And that's why when someone asks you, say, why do you do what you... Because uh, 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 Brother Don does it. Of course. Because Sister Rita does it. She teaches something. She loves it. So that's why... I, no, no, no. Why do we do it? To always give an answer why you believe what you believe. Because people are going to come to you. I had some strange questions today. And the only way you're going to get that answer is by the Holy Ghost being inside you. That brings back to remembrance the things that He spoke to you in your time. And then it comes out, and then you look and you say, I didn't even know that was there. It's because God uses it in a time of need. So always be prepared to give an answer why you believe what you believe. Study that word. Be a workman, study the word, not to be ashamed, but have a have an answer. And they say, you know, well, you know, it's like someone said. They used to call me sometimes. They don't remember, but he's calling me about, you know, it'd be 10, 11, 12. Hey, someone wants to get saved. I finally told him one time. I said, lead them to the Lord. You, no, you didn't jump up and go. They didn't want to see me like that. What was it going to do? Run over our mind? No, because I'd have been in a rush. Oh, I got to get there. I got to get away their time. I got to get there. No. Why the spirit is moving, why the water's being troubled, why their heart's tender. Say, man, do you know Jesus? Have you been born again? Have you been blood bought? Have you ever confessed Christ? Have you ever been born again? Do you know how important it is for you to know Jesus tonight, right now, and say, all you have to do is say, Lord, be my Savior, be my Lord, be my rock, be my salvation. I confess my sins, I lay them down before you, and I want you to be my God. You leave them to God. Because by the time I drive from across town to the other side of town, that convicting power that was on them may be gone. I've seen it. To where you get there and say, man, you ready to get saved? Well, not tonight. And then you look at the person like, well, why are you messing with my sleep? It's true. Learn. Understand. Always be ready to give an account. And tell them, so let me tell you what happened to me. July 20, 1997. My marriage was in the brinks. This is where I was at. Went into a service. The message was, what in song? It was just song. It was what in preached It was a song. And I, God began to deal with my heart. And I got to say, I looked at my watch and realized I'm a lying preacher. I'm going to get you out of it. Lord, forgive me. See there? He, the preacher's got to ask for forgiveness. Amen. So now I'm going to come in and see how I found out this how this works. And now I'm going to come in and say it's going to be a long night. I'm going to get out early. Amen. Does anyone need prayer? I want you to come. If you need prayer, I want you to come. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you tonight is it not a breakthrough. Now I need some people that's spirit filled and know they believe in God to come. Because tonight is breakthrough night. We're about to have a breakthrough up this prayer. Praise God. They somebody watching my airways. Boy, I wish I was there. I need my breakthrough. Just break dance where you at. We about to have a breakthrough. I don't care what it is. God's got it. He's your defense. He's your shield. He's got you protected. Can't nothing happen. The, uh, let me let me let you in on this. The only thing that can happen, to you, Sister Miranda, got it right there, is what you allow to let happen. Because you already know and give an answer for what you believe, why you believe, because Jesus died.